All right. So we are here in an interview with, is it Shoning or Sconing? I think we need to go get water. <laughs> All right. Apparently it's neither. There he is. All right. <laughs> Dan, Dan. I have my headphones on backwards. The first time I was listening to you guys. I was like, why is this so uncomfortable? Oh, okay. Dan is actually a... labeled the sides right and left. And I didn't even think to look, so we figured it out. Dan, surgery. Dan, is your last name pronounced Shoning or Sconing? It would be, uh, the English would be Shoning. Shon, oh, okay. But, uh, Shon. If you went full German, it would be like that song... Donka Shane, oh. you know, that, so it's the same word except the ing added on for English. All righty. So, all right. Yeah. So we are here. Mean, oh, go ahead. We are here with on Come Again with Dan Schoening and Eric Burnham. Did I say that right? Uh, close enough. Sure. All right. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm Shannon. I'm John Weiss. And this is Come Again. And for those of you who don't know, uh, these are the uh, guys behind the Ghostbusters comics in IDW right now. Uh, Amazing how, comics. Yeah, very excellent comics. Uh, I've been reading them for the past few months now, just getting up to date and everything, because normally around here, whenever we get a comic book shop, it's very difficult for us to uh, get Diamond to bring us right. comics. So, yeah. so it's hard to get IDW and Dynamite and all those. So, um, I would know. <laughs> so let's just get started. Uh, how were you guys approached by IDW and other comic book publishers originally? I think that one, Eric should start that one. Right. <laughs> if you, didn't, you go ahead. I want, I want to say first, before you go ahead though, I don't know if people will be able to see your shirts that you guys are wearing, but, uh, they're awesome Ghostbusters yes. shirts. Very nice. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. All right, go ahead, Eric. <laughs> All right, so so the the question was, how did we get approached? How did we get approached for Ghostbusters, or just in general? In general. In general, okay. Well, well, my story. I'm I'm going to give you the uh, the shortest version of the longer version. And Dan's heard this before, but uh, how I got into comics. And it all dovetails into IDW. Was I uh, I worked in radio for a while, then lost that job and spent a couple of years uh, of unemployment, just you know, dooting around online meeting people and, uh, you know, talking about comics. Eventually we were like, hey, you know, uh, we should give this a shot. Actually, the true thing is we were complaining about stuff and thought we could, you know, if we could do better, we should put our money where our mouth is. Uh, we put out some uh, some indie comics, and uh, Tom Waltz was a part of that for a little bit. We uh, the, the company that I was in, which was just the group of us together, uh, published his first miniseries. And when it was collected... Uh, that went through IDW, and he connected with him with them in that way, and eventually um, getting to know the people there became an editor. And he liked my stuff and asked if I would want to pitch to something that he was working on, which was the uh, Gene Simmons House of Horrors anthology. Mm. So I pitched to that. I got a story in. Um, and then, you know, he said, would you be interested in pitching for this, uh, which was a, a tie-in for a toy? I said yes. And then there was a... There was uh, some tie-ins to the A-Team movie. I said yes to that. Oh, nice. And then um, it was uh, during this time, he became the editor of Ghostbusters. I really wanted to work on that. I wanted to pitch something. <laughs> and uh, he said, okay, well, we've got a year's worth of one-shots, which was their holiday one-shots. We'll see if we can do something after that. And uh, true to his word, as soon as those were over, he offered me the Infestation 2-parter. I did that. It got a really good reception, and he asked me to pitch the ongoing. So, I mean, it was really just a matter of, uh, you know, um, tripping upwards. <laughs> Dan was involved with one of those uh, with one of those holiday one shots as well. So he was actually working on Ghostbusters before me. But, um, but yeah. So, I mean, that's uh, that's how it, I came to get from you know zero to Ghostbusters. Yeah, and I think that yeah. holiday uh, one shot was the one that Dan recommended to me that had the boogeyman in it. Yeah. No, uh, no, no. The uh, the one he got initially was uh, was the Peter David one, which was uh, was that Sam Hain did. Yeah, it was uh, the Halloween issue. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, which was amazing because it was kind of bringing together like actually four of my favorite things: Halloween, Ghostbusters, comics, <laughs> and uh, I love Peter David's work as well. Yeah. So it was really cool to have that opportunity to do that. 
But um, my story isn't quite as interesting as Eric's. <laughs> <laughs> I fell backwards into it, not forwards. But um, I actually started off doing animation, and I eventually kind of just found my way into doing comics. Um, before I did any comic book work, I did some animation work for uh, DC, and uh, that kind of led into me doing a whole bunch of chapter books that I did with DC and a company called Stone Arch Publishing, and they were kind of like based in that Bruce Tim DC animated style. Um, and then, yeah, after that, uh, I had pitched, uh, I can't remember how many issues it was with uh, a writer named James Etock who did the Serial Geek magazine, and he was also did a lot of the uh, extra features on the Time Life Real Ghostbusters um, DVD set that came out. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys are familiar with that. Uh, but, maybe uh, a little bit. <laughs> John's got the entire Sorry. collection. I have the entire collection. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, no, he's, he's interviewed in it, and he wrote uh, a fair bit of the behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, so, yeah, um, we pitched that, and it didn't go through, but uh, Tom did approach me to do that Halloween one shot with Peter David. And then I was very blessed and grateful when he came back and said, Oh, do you want to do uh, the pencils for the ongoing series? So it was, uh, I was a bit apprehensive at first because it felt like such a big undertaking <laughs> to take something that I really love and do it monthly. And, uh, but uh, here we are. It was like, yeah. was it like six and a half, seven years now? Isn't it, Eric? Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, March of uh, 2011, when the pitch went through, and we were talking about, uh, you know, talking about getting the series going. So yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been six years. And you know, I think I speak for every Ghostbusters fan out there when I say you guys do an amazing job with the Ghostbusters Great series. Job. I hope you guys stay on it for a long time because it's like picking up another mo a new movie of the Ghostbusters. I told John when I uh, introduced him to Mass Hysteria that yeah. you had uh, Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 2, Ghostbusters is a video game, which would technically be Ghostbusters 3, and then the Mass Hysteria comics, which I see as Ghostbusters 4. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Well, yeah, that's, all, that's all Eric's a genius. Really, I just <laughs> draw the, the funny pictures that go around. <laughs> well, I, I think it's both of you equally. You, uh, Dan, you have a great way of drawing that really... Uh, shows off the characters like that image of uh Peter and Dana where uh Peter's telling Dana that she never has to uh keep him out of out of the loop and everything that was that was an amazing image. I mean I, I love that image so much. Yeah that was a great opportunity that they gave us to use those uh uh, Dana and Lupus as characters because yeah. at first uh, Eric it's correct that they weren't didn't want us to use them and <laughs> Then we were able to kind of incorporate them into the story, I believe. Yeah, yeah. For the first um, for the first couple of years, that was the one of the things that they asked us not to do was to not use uh, uh, Dana, Lewis Tully, or uh, actually for a while there they didn't want us to use Slimer either. But we, we oh. snuck him in a little bit earlier. We just <laughs> promised it wouldn't be like a goofy, uh, like the version that was on the the real Ghostbusters, right, like right. a pet. Um, you know, it was what they they wanted to to avoid uh, that that. Uh, Confusion and I do uh, like the so, way you handled Slimer in the yeah. comics. It's very nice. Oh, yeah. Now, when you um, when you write the uh, the Ghostbuster characters, I know this isn't on the list, but <laughs> when you write the Ghostbuster characters in your mind, are you um, when you're writing their words, are you imagining the actors' voices on your page, or are you the real Ghostbuster versions? Uh, ninety percent of the time, it's the uh, it's the live action actors. Although every once in a while, with Egon, I hear Maurice LaMarche and yeah. Harold Ramis. Same here. Other yeah. than that, you know. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I've noticed, yeah. I've noticed a few times, like with Peter, it's almost like you've merged the uh, Bill Murray and the uh, Peter from the real Ghostbusters yeah. get together. Um, which I thought was very nicely done. Yeah, in yeah. my head, I, I kind of go back and forth between yeah. the two, depending on the scene. And and the Ghostbusters get real, where you have Peter about ready to knock the other Peter out. That was <laughs> that was a plus. <laughs> that was yeah. That was uh, Dan and I were talking about that uh, before we got going on the series, and uh, it was just the kind of thing that that Peter probably wouldn't like himself and would probably <laughs> like himself. In the mouth. And it was just you know one of those yeah. fun things that we wanted to work in. <laughs> yeah, so true. And, uh, you know, it, 
with the amazing dialogue that Eric wrote for it, I think it's also a testament to uh, Lorenzo Music's uh, acting talent for the show that those him and Bill Murray are almost kind of interchangeable. Yeah, though they're not exactly the same voice, but the man well, I mean, comes in his kind of nonchalant attitude about things and well, you a got a bit of sliminess. You know, <laughs> you, you got Peter Venkman and you got Garfield. You know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's weird how the universe works sometimes. <laughs> um, so how were you guys approached about doing the Ghostbusters board game? That Dan definitely was in on before me, so I'm going to let him take yeah. it this time. Okay. That's what I well, said. That is an amazing uh, game, by the way. Oh, thanks. Love yeah, it. I haven't actually had an opportunity to play it yet. I have flipped <laughs> through the... Uh, the manual and everything and looked at the pieces and it's really cool to see i'm very humbled to see all the the art made into like 3d miniatures it's especially the people that paint them too it's pretty amazing work i haven't had a chance um, to do that yet yeah. <laughs> i i haven't had a chance to play it yet it's a pretty expensive game but i do plan on yeah. getting it sometime in the near future that along with ghostbusters 2 shall come over and play something yeah <laughs> <laughs> sounds good um as for getting that uh, gig it was the first time i was at san diego comic con i met an employee who worked at cryptozoic and unfortunately i can't remember his name but he was very very kind and was really digging the comic book and he was like oh we got to get you to do some art for us and uh, we're doing a few ghostbusters things so it was like maybe about half a year later he contacted me or maybe it was someone from Cryptozoic, and they said, oh, we're going to be putting together this board game, and we'd like you to do the art for it. So I just started kind of rolling in and doing all this, uh, the model sheets, since I come from an animation background. It's quite familiar with how to rotate characters. Right. So the uh, 3D artists just used those directly and kind of modeled all the figures from that. Um, and then they wanted to do a story. They wanted to create kind of a storyline for the board game, and that's when they contacted Eric, so... Um, kind of that's the short story <laughs> and uh, I also wanted to say quickly too is that I don't think the comic would be nearly as good without Lewis's talents as well with the coloring right um, just wanted to give him a shout out because he's <laughs> constantly doing amazing work and just blowing me away and I've forgotten how to color now and I look at his <laughs> stuff and I'm like oh my god it's just always impressive every time he sends me something he, he says forgotten, but he doesn't need to remember because, yeah, Luis is just, he's fantastic. And uh, we really um, we really have uh, gelled quite a bit as a team. I can't, it's it's difficult to uh, put together the story in the same way without these two. I've, I've written for a couple of other artists, and it's just like uh, looking at it and going, now this looks great, but it's not Dan. <laughs> you know, I'm blushing, you just can't see it. <laughs> Um, did you want it's to take the next? It's cold here in Canada, so I don't um, get as rosy. Yeah, do we want to just skip yeah. five seems they already answered the yeah. poster. Um, so is there a comic you guys haven't worked on yet, but you would love to, like it's your grail to work on? Like your, your holy grail to work on? Do you want to go first, Eric? Or uh, you? Gosh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you go first, although you, you did get a crack at, at one of your favorite properties, I know that. I'll let you run from there. You did. Back to the Future. That's the right. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of a bucket list. And then I, I got to meet them, the cast. Or that, that, that was actually that another was question we were going to ask. Movie. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll, I'll hold <laughs> off on that, and I'll go into a comic I'd like to do. Um, I would love to do something uh, with either Marvel or DC. Um, it would be a lot of fun to kind of expand on a style that people may or may not know me for. Like uh, more of a comic book looking style, like, I would call it, because like any particular character, the, or... the style I draw in is very cartoony, which is makes a lot of sense because I come from an animation background. And we we chose these designs because it really, um, for the Ghostbusters, it really separates from the actors because we're not allowed to draw them. Right. And it also really plays up the element that Ghostbusters is a comedy in its very essence and core. So it having kind of funny looking characters really helps sell that <laughs> comedy even more. So, um, yeah, I, I can't think of any specific title. It would be fun to draw anything from either of those two um, camps, you could call it. So I could seem to I'd, I'd probably just take anything <laughs> they throw at me. <laughs> 
I would actually uh, like to yeah. see your guys' interpretation of either the Phantom or the Shadow. I think that would be pretty cool. I think they could do oh, a pretty yeah. good job with Fantastic Four, yeah, that, too. Yeah. That, that, that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd get a kick out of that. Um, I, I, uh, I got a little little bit of a crack at uh, the superhero world helping out um, helping out a, a friend on uh, on some books a few years ago on Scarlet Spider and uh, New Warriors, Chris Yost. Oh, nice. And um, that was fun. I, I'd, I'd like, a, you know, a straight-up proper, you know, even a short... Uh, story with uh with spider-man would be fun to write yes. uh you know my longtime favorite uh other than that i mean you know I'll, I'll i'll take whatever's thrown at me like dan said but that would be a fun one to work on just once i'd like to see his spider-man yeah yeah so uh well let's go ahead and skip ahead to the question uh those later on the list um have you guys met any of the actors uh, from the movies that you guys are creating the comic books for, like from Back to the Future, Ghostbusters, and whatnot? Oh, Dan sure has. <laughs> I, I meet nobody. I, I'm, I'm, I'm further out in the middle of nowhere than, than Dan is, and he lives on an island. Um, so, uh, yeah, but, but, but Dan has met, uh, met more people uh, than I have, and he's got some good stories about it, because I've heard them. Yes, they, they are good stories. I, <laughs> I the first one actually I'll start off with Dan Aykroyd. I was um, he I heard he was coming to town thanks to the Ghostbusters of BC. Uh, he was coming to do one of his uh, vodka signings. Uh, you know he sells the Crystal Head Skull vodka, which is really really good by the way. Yes, it is. And no, I don't I don't get paid <laughs> by them to say that. I'm not sponsoring, but uh, it is good. Um, yeah, no, he was uh, coming to sign um, at a local liquor store that we have in town. And they're also doing a charity to raise money for uh, a young boy who was going through a cancer treatment. So I had donated a whole bunch of art and comics uh, to the auction in hopes of raising a bit more money. And uh, I was able to meet and chat with him for a little bit um, at the signing, which was fantastic. I brought my mom with me, which was amazing because if it wasn't for her, I don't think I would be that much into Ghostbusters because she took me to see the first movie in the theater when it came out. Um, and uh, that was really cool. And we chat a little bit about Ghostbusters, and he has a huge passion for the property and for the characters and everything. And it's really nice to see that uh, he's continuing to do that. Um, and I think that's the only Ghostbuster I've met when I think about it. The other ones that we had talked about that I kind of jumped the gun on was that I got to meet Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lloyd, and Leah Thompson nice. at the Philadelphia Wizard World Comic Con last year. So I had done a, an exclusive cover for the show, so they flew me down and actually got to go and meet them for free, which is amazing because they were it's pretty pricey to get photo ops with celebrities at some of the shows, but um, uh I didn't get a chance to really speak with Michael J. Fox, but I did chat with Christopher Lloyd and Leah Thompson, and they're super nice, very humble, and uh, just as awesome as you would want them to be. So it was yeah, really nice. cool. Very, it's kind of like another check off the bucket list. <laughs> and uh, also, we've Eric and I have both met Bob Gale before as well, who co-created Back to the Future, and he's awesome. And uh, that's true. the first time the first time I met him, I was really kind of holding back my inner geek because I wanted to ask him so much about Back to the Future. But uh, I think I did pretty good. I was a bit more nervous than anything, so I didn't want to say anything stupid. <laughs> That's I, yeah, I, I, I didn't meet uh, too many of the folks, but I did um, I did get to go uh, down and visit Ghost Corps on the Sony lot a few weeks back, which was pretty awesome in and of itself. So, um, you know, I got to play around with the, with the Ghostbusters VR that's uh that's coming sooner or later and um you know they got to laugh at me you know trying to dodge something that wasn't actually there <laughs> um, and uh you know and and cru cruise around the uh cruise around the studio back lot on a golf cart i got to check that off my, deck, my bucket list so take that dan but you know, did, it, did, it, did it have the ecto siren on the uh no you know what somebody they they had a golf cart that's made up to look like Ecto One, but somebody moved it. <laughs> so they couldn't find it, so we had to just, you know, jump on a jump on a regular one. I can just um, imagine someone finding it and they're like, You can't park that here. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, it was there was there was no it was it was moved it was moved so it was it was supposed to be right up with the uh, with the Ecto cars, but uh yeah. No, so anyway that was um 
that was a real blast. It was it was uh, neat to uh, to see the offices, the uh, the head offices there, and uh, you know wander around a little bit. But that's as that's as close as I've gotten to uh, to behind the scenes of the the movies. We we have also met Kevin Eastman as well. Don't forget oh, that's that. true. That's, nice, yeah. that's true. It's amazing to meet him as well because I was a huge I fan of Ninja Turtles point. growing up, and uh, having the opportunity to draw them with the Ghostbusters was. I would have, my eight-year-old self would have blown up, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? It's I've, it's gotten to the point now where, where where Kevin is making fun of me when I see him at the IDW booth, so I I tend to forget. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, he's he is he is the uh, one of the nicest people I've ever met. Yeah, super sure. kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> What's the weirdest thing a fan has asked you to sign? Nothing weird, although I always uh, it, it, it feels strange to to sign uh, action figures on on the figure itself. I've gotten that with a couple of Ninja Turtles, but uh, you know nothing strange. I mean, uh, props every once in a while. I've, I've uh, signed some of those and um, hats. I've I've signed, but um, yeah, I can't think of anything that's just out and out strange. It's strange for me to sign like an action figure, but that's not strange in and of itself. So, how about you, Dan? Uh, well, yeah, I'm having this vague memory of someone getting me to sign something that I didn't work on. And I, I think I signed it anyway, because I just didn't know what to say, but I think it was at one of the local shows around you town know. here, and they may have not known who I was, so... I, uh, Surprise, it's me. I, I share a last name with uh, with the DC artist, uh, Chris Burnham, and uh, at, a, at a Chicago show a couple years ago, he's, he's right a few tables down from me. Somebody came up he holds up a Scarlet Spider comic and a Batman comic. Said, "Which one are you?" <laughs> <laughs> my my name is on the banner right behind me. If he would have just opened the book, it would have answered his question. I just I always just get a kick out of that. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of uh, fit action figures, um, but you sign on action figures. Has anyone approached you guys yet about turning? Maybe uh, Dan, maybe turning your. Uh, Ghostbusters into action figures. That'd be nice. That'd be yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, just the uh, just the Cryptozoic uh, board game miniatures for now. Uh, that would be awesome if like uh, Diamond or Maddie wanted to do that. Which again but, looks uh, amazing. Yeah, we haven't uh, gotten a peep out of that, but uh, I think if the fans really asked for it, they might consider it. So. Okay, fans. So uh, you heard it. Let's go. Yeah. Let let's <laughs> let's get some of Dan's Ghostbusters into action figures. <laughs> so, uh, did I'd you want to... first to buy them, so... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the narcissism. <laughs> I, I want to see the characters we've created pop out. It, 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 it just made me geek out to see the miniatures of, uh, of the stuff that was original of the comic books in that first mm -hmm. board game, so that would, be, uh, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, it would be cool to have, like, a Ron Alexander figure... Yeah, I, yeah, you know, there. Uh, somebody made a custom of that last year. Did I send you a picture? That's right. Of that? I did. See it was that. Yeah. it was neat. Yeah. So I mean, uh, people have made some customs of these, and uh, that's always a fun surprise. Uh, somebody sent me uh, some patches of the Ghost Smashers logo, but uh, something official, uh, you know, official merchandise with uh, with our characters. Other than oh wait, uh, there was a video game too, Dan. A mobile video game that had Ron and and Oh Tia yeah, that's right. It was like yeah. a. a a jewel game where you drop it was like Tetris with jewels or something. Yeah, yeah, like oh, a, like I a had that on my player. phone. Oh. I had that on my yeah. phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the, so I mean, like I said, th this stuff is neat. But I mean, I'm I'm circling around back to it would just be super cool to to have a like an action figure you could put on the on the desk uh, of something we made up. That would be you know a nice little yeah little yeah. Uh, ego boost. <laughs> I, I'd really like an Ellen Gold that uh, the nanny ghost. Oh yeah. And if you lift her up, there's all the kids under. You can hide all the kids under her dress. Yeah, that's kind of creepy. Thing. Yeah, it would be kind of creepy. Yeah. It sounds creepy. Me just talking about it right now. <laughs> I think she's part of the second game, though, so you've at least got that. Yeah, we're halfway there. We just need to go up a few sizes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, did you want to take the next question, John? Oh, uh, sure. Um, what's been your favorite comic to work on? Oh, this Ghostbusters, uh, without a doubt. Dan's yeah. going to say Back to the Future. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'd say I'm the most proud of the Ghostbusters work that we've done, for sure. So it makes it my favorite because yeah. of that. So. Well, 
it's 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 been the most fun I, again for me bar none and it's it's also something i'm really proud of is you don't often see in this day and age a creative team going uh pretty much unbroken there's only been three fill-in issues out of all the issues that we've done together uh you know several years you don't you don't see that anymore it used to be pretty common and uh now it's just not so um yeah i'm i'm, I'm proud that uh that dan and Luis and i have have worked on this book and and had a pretty solid strong run for gosh uh, counting all the miniseries and the annuals we're, we're getting pretty close to 60 issues Nice. That, that would explain all the gray hair I have now over the past six years. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> He's seen the scripts. <laughs> it's all those late nights. I, I work long hours, so that's why. I, I actually write into the script now, Dan, don't draw a background. He does it anyway, but I write it in there to, you know, ease my own guilt. <laughs> Sometimes I don't draw one in, but not, most of the time I do. It's true. So. Speaking of drawing and uh, in the stories and everything, whose idea was it to include you guys into what was it? Uh, one of the annuals uh, where Dan's doing research, and then Eric, I think you and was it Luis were interviewing Winston. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that I uh, I came up with that I think because that story was actually written. 2012 was when the story was actually written. We were we were uh, we put it together back then after after bouncing the idea back and forth, and uh, it was it was me and Louise sitting there in the diner because because Dan <laughs> Dan didn't want to draw himself in that much of the issue. He was he was feeling a little a little bit of uh, humbleness. So I, I specifically wrote that in to have him running away from the ghosts. Where's Dan? Uh, he's on his, he's on vacation. He's on vacation. Yeah, yes. let's go with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I am I am proudest of the uh, I, I am proudest of the the, the little self deprecating joke there at the end. That was a late addition when I was revising it. Uh, so uh, a little knock against uh, a little knock against myself, but it made me laugh to write it. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took a while for us to get that one in print, but uh, it's true. it was it, definitely this, worth the wait. It was fun for sure. Uh, the story overall, uh, the story itself was, was all Dan's idea. He wanted to, uh, he wanted to put that story together and, uh, the, the basic plot, uh, was all Dan. He, he wanted to show what Winston was doing and, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, mother of the, uh, oh gosh, now I'm blanking on their names. Scalari. Scalari. Thank you. I, I, I kept wanting to say the wrong name. Uh, <laughs> Yes, I know. <laughs> just, I'm just like blank, blanking out on the Scalari brothers. Um, but uh, yeah, his, his idea to throw the uh, the Scalari brothers' mother in there, and uh, so yeah, that was all Dan. And I just you know knocked out uh, an eight page gig, you know, gig fest. And you but, know, uh, mostly yeah, was, the inspiration was Dan. And you know, growing up watching to... watching Ghostbusters too, I'm sure a lot of kids actually always wondered where Winston was during that because. All you saw was him sure. briefly in the courtroom, and that was it. Was he even briefly mm -hmm. in the courtroom? Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say that. I think that's one of the things I'm most proud of about the work we've done with Ghostbusters is that we've given Winston more of a voice. Yeah. And yes. I really wanted to... That was the main drive behind doing that short story about son, <laughs> where he was during that courtroom scene because I always felt like, where did that character go? Like, he's just as important as the other three we need to find out what happened to him. And, and even with just the little outline that I came up with, Eric knocked it out of the park with the, the dialogue and just had, it was just worked out really well. It was really fun to draw. Do you want to take the next question? Um, so uh, were you guys uh, doing your art and writing growing up? I'm sure uh, were you guys given a hard time in school for this by other kids or bullied in any way or? Uh, no, not for, not for liking or, or, uh, um, liking comics or, or, or doodling or anything like that. I mean, uh, if anything, um, and Dan might've had the same experience with sketching. I, I more often than not got asked to draw things than got, got bullied. So, uh, not, not to say that there, there wasn't, uh, a little bit of, of, of typical bullying because I moved all around a lot, but it never had anything to do with, uh, with comics or art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I can't say I remember anything related directly to that as far as uh, usually everybody was really 
like, oh, cool, you could draw that. Like, <laughs> oh, you can, why don't you draw this for me? Kind of like echoing what you just said, Eric. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, w I would get a lot of, oh, what, who is that supposed to be or what's that? And <laughs> over time, I was, got a little bit more bitter to that question because <laughs> I got kept hearing it so often. But uh, now I'm fine with it. I don't mind if people ask me what I'm drawing. Um, what advice do you guys have for aspiring artists and writers? Uh, finish what you start is a good one. Um, because completing a project, you know, trains you to keep completing the project, not completing a project trains you to, you know, not, it's, it's a, it's a weird thing to say, but it's true. So, uh, finishing it, uh, and continuing to finish stuff, you learn, you grow, you keep going and you have the ability and the mindset and the habit of finishing, um, and that just makes it easier to produce work. You produce more work, and you will build an audience eventually. I mean, maybe a small audience, maybe a big audience, but you will find one if you finish your work, produce it, get it out there. So hopefully also you'll improve from the repetition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah and echoing that, patience is a huge key. Um, mm -hmm. I always tell everybody that just do what you love and love what you do. So if you have a passion for something, then that is your purpose. And if you follow it, then uh, I, I, I personally believe that you will be supplied with everything that you need to survive if you're following your passion. So um, I have been very blessed, and I haven't actually had to ever reach out and ask for work from anybody for the past maybe 10 years, nice. um, which I think is really awesome. So Oh, yeah. Um, just having that opportunity and yeah, just for artists in particular, draw every day, draw things that you find challenging to draw. Um, if you want to do comic book art, it's really important to know how to draw cars and buildings and environments, not just the characters. Um, and life drawing lessons are huge. So I'm just kind of dipping my toes back into that again. I used to do it a lot when I was doing animation because it was almost a requirement for the job. But uh, with uh, just learning how to draw things realistically is really important for you able to take it a step further and distort that. So now, definitely uh, life drawing's good. Have you guys thought about creating uh, YouTube channels for like, um, like Mark Crilly has his uh, How to Draw channel. Have you guys thought about doing anything like that? Gosh, I, I sure haven't, but I... Um... You know, it's it's uh, coming up with the content and editing. My my sister and brother are both uh, YouTubers. It's I, I've seen how much work goes into it, and I can't imagine how I would fit it into my schedule. So I definitely can't understand how Dan can fit it. Into his. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm working on that experiment that Egon was trying. Fourteen That's minutes it. of sleep every That's day. It. That's it. That's it. Leaves a lot more down time to 10. for work. It's true. We'll have you down to ten by the end of the year. Ten minutes. That's my That's goal. It. That's it. You know, like some people are like, I'm gonna keep that ten pounds off. I'm gonna keep that ten minutes. I, I think that's about what Casey Neistat gets for. <laughs> do you want to take? Oh, one other thing I, I do quickly want to mention though too, uh, for anybody who's aspiring to get into comics, is that it's really good to take care of yourself as well. And that's yeah. something that has taken me a while to learn, but I'm starting to understand that more. That. Uh, life away from doing comics and, and art is really important because it not only will it offer you a chance to sleep, <laughs> which is fantastic, it'll also give you a chance to experience other things in life that you can then incorporate into your art. Um, and, it, and it shows a lot how maybe well-traveled or well-experienced you are um, in your art is how your visual voice looks. Okay. You want to take them? Sure. Um, now, do you guys have any type of industry horror stories you wouldn't mind sharing? Oh gosh, um, can you be more specific? Because I can't think of anything off the top of my head uh, um, that would be that would be horrifying enough. So <laughs> narrow it down. Well, like um, uh, any any like super uh, massive problems you've had during the process right. of writing or drawing, or like people you've had to work with that you didn't I, I'm sure you can't really say their names or anything right. but right um, right like, well, yeah I've been, I've been pretty fortunate in that regard the the only thing maybe uh, that was that was awful was I, I I mean 
that came close to, to working was I, I had to, to rewrite a 22 page script from scratch, uh, in, in less than 24 hours. So, I mean, that was a, that was a bit of a long slog, but that was as close to nightmarish as I've ever had. I've, <laughs> I've worked with great people. Um, I've had good experiences. I've never had to, uh, I've never had to deal with anybody testy, uh, either, you know, a collaborator, you know, artist, colorist or, or editorial, all that's been good. Um, I can't, uh, I mean, you know, even the, the quote unquote negative fan act interaction has been, you know, I mean, super mild. I mean, it, it, it's the kind of thing where, you know, uh, somebody comes up and it's a backhanded compliment. Uh, they hand me a marble book and said, I'm so glad you're finally working on something that matters. And they don't mean it as an insult <laughs> at all. Uh, they're just excited because I'm working on something that they love. And I, you know, I understand that. So, I mean, that's, that's as close as it gets. I never have anything uh, awful happen. So that's good. That's a, that's a good one. I'd never heard that. Yeah. <laughs> never heard that story. Um, I can't think of anything horrific while I've been doing comics, but when I was doing animation, um, it was just, I, I guess I, I can't name names or places or anything like that, but I think it, I found with what I was doing before comic books, it was very unrewarding because the art wasn't, they just kind of wanted us to do it kind of quick and dirty and there was no real care put into the, there wasn't enough time to put in that care to make the art look really good. So I eventually kind of just got worn out of that. And that's when I started just doing freelancing for full time. But uh, yeah, nothing, uh, nothing as horrific and backhanded as that uh, compliment that you got, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, even that wasn't wasn't too terrible. So I mean, I'll take that any day over you know some of the horror stories that I've heard uh, in passing from from colleagues. <laughs> mm. uh, what was your guys' favorite Ghostbuster story you've done so far? Oh geez, um, Dan, I'm gonna need more time to think. You better step in. <laughs> well, I can give you two. I'll give you two. One of them was my favorite to draw, which was the issue when they were in New Orleans. Oh, I've yeah. always wanted to go to New Orleans, so I haven't been yet. But I love the architecture and the energy in that place. So, um, from what I've seen, and getting to draw that. Um, area was amazing i had a lot of fun i love the the uh old style kind of french design in the building and as well as like all the foliage like it's a very green and luscious area of the world so um, one day i'll make it there but i really like drawing that and got to draw some zombies in there and some kind of cool little drummer ghosts and uh put a lot of research into that issue i think my second favorite would be the annual with the Sandman in it. Okay. And I really, I just really enjoyed that story. It was just, well, Eric always does an amazing, amazing job, but that one just really clicked with me. And yeah, that was a nice I, take I really on the Sandman. That yeah. character. Glad to hear that. I, I didn't know that it, it stuck out. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> um, okay, well, uh, let's see. I, You know, I also enjoyed uh, I, I've also always wanted to go to New Orleans so I mean that's why I kind of wrote that story in for Dan to draw uh, it's just a, a love for the area that I've just again never gotten a chance to visit but um, let's see a couple of favorites, uh, favorites one of the uh, favorites I had to write was the um, was our second arc uh, when Peter exercised himself I just had a lot of fun writing that particular scene um, just because it was weird and uh and also, I think also I liked I, I like uh, there's a couple of just small moments uh, that are coming to mind. So it's not really one story, but I mean it's just um, I, I like writing some of the smaller moments, uh, a little you know a, a little tiny aside a joke here or you know a uh, human moments there that that are not super dramatic or super funny, but they're just you know. They, they, they make the characters human, which makes the comedy play better. I mean, those are the kind of things that I enjoy writing most in there, and they're sprinkled all throughout. Yeah, I think one of the best um, the best types of that would be uh, in Mass Hysteria, where Venkman is talking to uh, Walter Peck, and he gets a call on the mm -hmm. phone, and then uh, quickly Just he books, yeah jumps books on the motorcycle and rides away. 
I think that's a very good example of that. Yeah. Yeah, even mm. even Peck, uh, he's he's uh, he's worried about a family friend that we did in uh, Ghostbusters International. That was fun. Uh, people didn't expect they they they're always surprised when Peck comes across as a, a human being, which which is a, a great deal of fun for me to put in the book because of that. Yeah, you guys have done an amazing job turning yeah. Peck from the Pecker head that we knew in <laughs> Ghostbusters one to like to a fairly likable yeah. character. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if he's likable, but he is understandable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, he wig does have a heart. It's true. It's true. It's, uh, it's true. It's, this man it's buried it. under all the marshmallow, so, but... <laughs> yeah. That's right. No, well, I mean, it's it wouldn't make any sense if everybody, if you know, if there were characters running around the world, it, they're, they're human beings. I mean, they're jerks or any other things, but they're all, uh, they're all human beings. I think the closest thing we've got... Uh, we we replaced Walter with Ron Alexander with just a total irredeemable <laughs> character of a person. Um, is is now Ron Alexander? <laughs> yeah, he's. Uh, I'm not sure what to think about Ron. I mean, is there <laughs> is there um, in the future could we be getting a Ghostbusters Chicago comic? Um, I would like to think it's of that. it's you know it's not impossible uh, to maybe see. A short story or one shot uh, down the line, if uh, if we come up with something good, or if somebody comes up with something good, and IDW and and uh, Sony all agree to it and uh, see that there's money to be made and and uh, and like the angle, you know, then yeah, sure, maybe it's nothing, it's not uh, impossible. Um, I don't know how likely it is or it isn't at this point in time, but I sure would like to do it. I, I get a kick out of uh, out of playing some of the same beats with uh, with fresh eyes with different characters so I'd like to see it and uh, you know all this babbling is basically you know boils down to I don't know maybe It'd be cool <laughs> yeah I, I really like how you guys took the rookie from the Ghostbusters video game and gave him his own Ghostbusters franchise that, and, that was a nice touch but he keeps the nickname the rookie yeah yeah I like that yeah uh, mm-hmm. was yeah. I, it's good what, luck isn't it wasn't it revealed his once that his name? Uh, he he uh, Tristan Jones, who was doing the backups, gave him a name, and I, I kind of prefer to not know his name. Yeah. But I don't want to contradict what Kristen put in there either. So um, I I just I I'm not going to contradict it, but I'm not going to use it unless absolutely necessary. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so I mean just I, just to keep the joke alive. Yeah. Uh, that he's always referred to as that, but I mean, as far as it goes, yeah, he he uh, he got a name from Tristan, and that's what his name would be. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Do you I want think to it was a play it? off of the actual person they modeled the f- character off of. I think he was one of the art leads on the game. On the I think so. Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was Ryan French was the actual guy's name, maybe, mm-hmm. or maybe that's the one Tristan made up. I can't remember. Oh. I'm forgetting <laughs> one of the names. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'll have to go. I think it's in my omnibus. Volume one, I may have to go mm-hmm. back and check, but yeah, it should be in there mm-hmm, for sure. Yeah. Is there a crossover story you would like to do that you haven't done so far, like just like Ghostbusters and Spider Man or Ninja Turtles and X Men or something like that? So mm-hmm. just maybe Star Trek. I saw versus... a really good one today. I, I oh, yeah, that I'm really stoked about would be the Golden Girls meets Elvira. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw that picture. That would be pretty good. Because no. Elvira posted that picture today, and I was like, that would be just amazing. No, I've met that Elvira. She is an amazing woman. Oh, I'd love to meet her. I'm she's just, a she's, she's her, hilarious. So. She's amazing. Yeah. yeah one day. Uh, Tom, Tom Waltz came up with one a couple of years ago that would have been a lot of fun but is is right now not possible for any number of reasons, and that would be uh, the Ghostbusters and the Fantastic Four. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that'd be kind of neat. Would be uh, would be a lot of fun, and uh, you know, I mean, if if that ever does become possible, I know exactly what we'd do, and exactly how it would work, and exactly that uh, Reed and Egon would hate each other. So <laughs> that, that was would, that was my first question: would be... Is who's smarter, Egon or Reed Richards? <laughs> Well, Egon's going to think he is. Just he's going to have. That's where his ego's going to come out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, but yeah, no, I I would uh, I would get a big kick out of doing that crossover. I wouldn't mind seeing a oh, real be... Ghostbusters with Filmation's Ghostbusters team up. That'd be neat. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, people, that'd be pretty people, cool. Going back to the yeah, people have, uh, have asked for that. I'm not sure where the rights lie for uh, for Filmation at this point, but 
Going back to your uh, Fantastic Four idea, it'd be nice banter between Johnny Storm Thing and Venkman. It's true. <laughs> it, uh, it is. Uh, it is absolutely true. There'd be there'd be plenty of fun. Uh, fun. There. Actually, you know, I think uh, would would be more entertaining would be uh, would be Ben and Janine hanging ah, out. Yeah. I yeah. think that would be yeah. that yeah. would be the most fun to write right there. Just you know, just totally over everybody's nonsense. That's. <laughs> <laughs> I could see Janine. Uh... Picking up one of Ben's cigars and puffing on it. They just it. go to the local pub and just <laughs> down a few. Yeah, they, just, yeah. they, they, they go up for a beer and say, hey, let me tell you something else. <laughs> He's got Johnny Storm stories. She's got Venkman stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what can we expect in the future of Ghostbusters for IDW? Aside from Ghostbusters uh, 101. Well, um, that's kind of up in the air. Uh, Tom and, and Dan and I have uh, have discussed a few different things. They want more. We're not sure quite yet what more will be. There's a couple of irons in the fire, a couple of ideas, uh, at least one of which would uh, you know, probably require Dan to take a six-month vacation when it was done. But yeah. uh, uh, right now, I mean, uh, I, honestly, I honestly couldn't tell you what's next. Um, I could not. So, um, I mean, I know it's, it's one of a couple of possibilities and whatever gets the green light first is what it will be. And uh, I can't wait to find out. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we're still, uh, I'm just finishing issue five as far as penciling is going. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it should be wrapped up issue six within about four weeks or so, maybe four and a half. Mm -hmm. And then, uh. And then we'll see what uh, is on the table. Mm -hmm. Lots of comics. We'll, we'll, we'll know before Dan. We'll know before Dan has to draw it. So I know it won't just be the next day. Of... Yeah. I know you guys can't tell us the ending of 101. Sure. Uh, I know you guys can't tell us the ending of 101. But the, is there a chance that we could... <laughs> but is there a chance that we could see a new joined universe between the uh, Answer the Call and the Originals? Um, well, the, the whole thing is, uh, one of, uh, Dan Aykroyd's initial ideas for the Ghostbusters is he wanted them to be multiversal. Uh, you know, the only thing we haven't gotten into, uh, as far as our run is, is straight up time travel, but I mean, we could always, we could always make that play as just, a, another type of, uh, dimensional travel, you know? Don't, but, uh, um, don't go into time uh, travel because so I mean, that was done. Uh, in one of the earlier IDW Ghostbusters stories, and it oh, yeah, didn't yeah, really yeah. turn out that great. I I didn't think. Well, so. you know, I mean, we we we'd find our own unique spin on it if we went there. <laughs> but the whole the whole point of it is um, that uh, it, it 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 will be a multiverse, and I mean, it's no spoiler to say things will get put back to uh, the way they were, and the two the two worlds and the two New Yorks will be separate again. But now they'll know about each other, and our Ghostbusters do have a way to visit. Uh, should they need to? So I mean, uh, they'll be connected, uh, but separate. Mm -hmm. Maybe a uh, infinite crisis for uh, mm -hmm. Ghostbusters. Have all the different Ghostbusters teams. I'm seeing a Back to the Future Ghostbusters crossover. In the there future, you go. Maybe? Yeah. yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. Then who's smarter, Doc Brown or Egon? <laughs> <laughs> I could Man, I, I could see Doc Brown with a proton pack. That would. Be... <laughs> yeah, I, 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 eyes all over the I place. I see Doc sure. Brown trying trepanation, but. Um, <laughs> 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 they need two drills, one for you. Right. Doc Brown wants to uh -huh. dissect Slimer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you want to take the next one? Uh, sure. Uh, if you guys could be any character that you've drawn or written, who would you choose? If we could be any of the characters? Yeah. We are characters that Dan has drawn and I've written, so it's all... <laughs> <laughs> That's a cheap, cheating answer, Eric. It, it yeah. totally is. It totally is. <laughs> um... Uh, let's see. Uh, well, um, I, uh, goodness. Go, go, go for it, Dan. I want to hear what yours is. I'm, I'm still thinking. You know, I've always had a, a fondness for Green Lantern. So I would Thank you. Say, no. Just because <laughs> Thank he can stuff with his ring, and I would just have a field day with that. So I don't think I'd get much outer space policing done as I would making cool <laughs> stuff out of hard light all day. So I'm I actually think we both agree with that. Yeah. 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 We're, we're both Green Lantern fans. Huge too, Green Lantern so. fans. Oh, yeah. Thanks. There we go. Um, well, uh, let's see. Stuff that I've written that I could 
conceivably be. I'm I'm torn uh, partly uh, through uh, through Kane, the uh, the Spider-Man clone, just because he, mm-hmm. he was so much fun to write with a, a very uh, acerbic attitude, which I would love to adopt in public, uh, <laughs> but can't. Uh, or or uh, or Jason from Galaxy Quest would also be a kind of a kick. Mm, that'd be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did finally watch that movie. Eric. Yes. I See, I, I I knew you would love it. He when when uh, when the opportunity came uh, for me to do a, a Galaxy Quest miniseries, uh, Dan was asked about drawing it, but he hadn't seen it yet, so he passed. And I was just like, God, <sighs> dang it, it would have been perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really so, good movie. Yeah. Right. So next time, next time, uh, next time we'll 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 get Dan in on the fun. Well, now, have you watched it with the uh, Alien Language soundtrack? Oh gosh! Yeah. No, no, I, I, haven't, so. I haven't actually done that. Give that a try. Uh, I lasted uh, maybe close to thirty minutes before I finally shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair uh, learning. Kind of yeah. side set step in Galaxy Quest. Now this wouldn't be much of a geek show if we didn't ask this one important question: Trek or Wars? I would be less likely to die in the Star Trek universe, <laughs> so I'm going to go with that out of pure self-preservation. Uh, you're not wearing a red shirt. I, I, to, be, to be perfectly honest, I am. <laughs> oh, no. I'm screwed. Week. I'm screwed either way. Oh, come on. No, um, yeah, that's um, it's it. It's yeah, yeah. I I I, I grew up with a little bit more of the uh, the Star Trek. Uh, earlier and more often and uh, more heavily, so I go with Star Trek for that reason alone. It just uh, it beat Star Wars to the punch. Mm. I, I grew up more with Star Wars, so I got to go with the Star Wars. Um, you go. Well, I saw Empire Strikes Back in the theater, and my mom always tells the story about how when Yoda first appeared on screen, I thought it was a great idea, being five at the time, that's for everybody. And, <laughs> and uh, this is a packed theater, too, and I don't know where I got this idea from, but I inspired other children to come up and do it, too, so everybody was <laughs> laughing. Yeah, it was bizarre. Um, there we go. But I, I guess I just really liked Yoda. I don't know why I did it. I can't remember well, why, but... Well, Yoda is the best. Yeah, he's my Straight favorite up. Star Wars character. So. He is also my favorite Star Wars character, absolutely. Yeah. Can't beat them up. It's Frank Oz yeah. for the win. That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Or, no, I'm good. Uh, what, is your, uh, what has been your favorite convention experience? Gosh, you know, um, I, I think the, the most fun uh, that I actually had... Uh, at a convention was the first time I went to San Diego Comic-Con in 2012. I got to meet Dan for the first time after we'd been working with each other for about a year. I got to meet Tom Waltz for the first time after we'd known each other for, um, gosh, uh, seven or eight years. I got to uh, I got to meet Luis. I got to, you know, see this this massive, crazy convention. And uh, and um, at the uh, the end of uh, day two, I think, we just uh, we went to a Mexican restaurant. We sat around and uh, chatted over uh, too many tacos and beers. That was fantastic. I think that's going to go up there with uh, with my favorite off the top of my head. No such thing as too many yeah. tacos and too many beers. <laughs> <laughs> Not until you passed out. Yeah. You right. <laughs> um, I'd have to echo what uh, Eric was saying. Those are the most fun, is when we are all able to get together in person. Um, we always have a great time, and click together really well and it's like we've known each other for more than the amount of time we've been working together which is really cool um so yeah san diego is a great show for connecting with the team and with other artists as well and uh i would say as far as um kind of uh like comic book shows go um on the on a more professional side i guess you could say i had a amazing experience at the recent Calgary uh, Expo that was just a month or two ago. Um, but I don't think I've ever been treated that well at a show before. It was amazing at how well they always made sure we had water and they were feeding us lots. They had these amazing cookies and uh, it was uh, yeah, a fantastic time. So I highly recommend both. Although I think San Diego might be a bit harder to get into. So all right, now... From what I've heard. Did you use Eugene Levy for the basis of Lewis's cousin in Mass Hysteria? 
look-wise? Or do you mean, like... All yeah, around, because he does kind of resemble uh, Eugene Levy. Yeah, he, he kind of does, I guess. <laughs> I can't say for sure, but, you know, in Ghostbusters <laughs> 2, Eugene Levy was Lewis's brother in that movie. They just cut his scenes out. Oh, oh, it was one yeah, of the, uh, the cut scenes when he actually... Um, Eugene Levy's character is the one that actually gets them out of Parkview Hospital. Oh, okay. um, and you can uh, Google that and see some photos. I don't know, you know if the that? footage is. No, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah, we learned something new tonight. When I was that originally the inspiration for it. when I was originally reading Mass Hysteria, I saw that scene between Lewis and his cousin, and I was like, "That has got to be Eugene Levy." It, just spitting image. Yeah. So every time I read a, one of his dialogues, I read it in Eugene's voice. Um, also, Eric, I wrote it as Dave Thomas, so I don't know what you're thinking about. I guess not kidding. I, uh, <laughs> Eric, you kind of answered this uh, slightly on Twitter a couple weeks ago. Um, whose idea was it to merge Roland and Garrett from the Extreme Ghostbusters into uh, Garrett Parker for the 101 series? And were did you intentionally make him autistic, or was that just a happy accident? Uh, I, I did, I did intentionally name him Garrett, um, because uh, Dan had a look that was very close to Roland, and I, um, uh, I didn't want people to start asking for the debut of the Extreme Ghostbusters, which they already have, uh, <laughs> to a degree. They, they wanted to see the whole team pop up since, ever since we started using Kylie. Um, we, we tried to throw him off, or I tried to throw him off by, by, um, a little, uh, little Eduardo cameo, but I don't want to, to bring in... Uh, that whole team and, and rebuild them. And then, you know, I wouldn't be able to use them because we have a lot of characters as it is. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I just, I, I just wanted to, um, to throw out there that, uh, that he's, he's, he's not Roland. I just wanted to make it clear that he wasn't Roland. And I thought that the best way to do that and, and you know, have a little wink was to name him Garrett. So, I mean, I, I, I'm not saying that the characters don't exist somewhere in that world. I'm just <laughs> saying that this isn't him. Um, as far as autistic, um, you know, I, I, uh, I, 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 I didn't know if, if that was something that I could pull off. I had it in my mind that maybe we would go that way with him, but I wasn't sure that it would play. So I just, uh, you know, I tried a couple of things and then, you know, would see if anybody tripped onto it or not. So, yeah, it, it was yeah, very so. nicely done. I, one of my neighbors is autistic, so I, I caught on to that right away. It, very nicely done. I've been promoting the hell out of it because of yeah. the uh, potential autistic Ghostbuster. Yeah. Very nice. Um, it, it could give some younger aut autistic fans... Um, someone to read about, look up yeah, to. Yeah, so, someone to look up to. You know, very nice. Mm -hmm. And I think right. Dan, uh, Dan, you drew it perfectly the way he uh, didn't really quite make eye contact... Um, and you guys never really came out and said that he was autistic in the comic that, you know, you just wanted to see if anyone would catch on. And I, mm -hmm. I think anyone who's familiar with it did pretty, uh, did catch on quite well. Uh, you guys pulled it off amazingly. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah I was, yeah, I also sensed in a, a lot of the dialogue when I was reading it that he was very sad as well so i really wanted to play that emotion up in the art and uh, try and showcase that with his expressions mm -hmm. um it's, it would it would be a challenging situation as well what he's going through so yeah a few uh, a few right. folks now have uh, have come up and uh, messaged me uh, uh twitter on facebook and and you know uh so on and uh have, have talked about that that little that little scene between uh, Kevin Tanaka and uh, and Garrett, uh, and you know they've 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 pointed that out as something that that struck them, which I again I mean I'm I'm super happy to hear it, but I I, I thought that you know maybe folks would uh, would would not connect to it, <laughs> you know maybe um, I was worried I asked Tom if I should cut it. Um, because I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't sure it would play. Sometimes, sometimes there's a scene that I write that I'm not sure it will play, and uh, and every once in a while they, they turn out to be the ones that people, you know, connect to. So um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of grateful for that. Nothing else, you know. 
Well, like I said, you did an amazing job. I'm very, glad very you good. kept it. Uh, most of the scenes that you you know you've said that you weren't sure if they were going to play. I think we can pretty much agree. We're glad you ended up Definitely keeping them. Uh, yeah. Very nicely done. You guys really grasp the uh, identities of the Ghostbusters perfectly. Um, it, it every story is like watching another movie of the original Ghostbusters. It's just fantastic how well you guys uh, kind of uh, link up with them. Well, thank you very much. Like, yeah, it's it's like perfect, it, like it, it really is, too. and mm-hmm. yeah. Being uh, compared to any fashion to the original, any of the films actually is mm-hmm. a, a huge hat tip because so much work and effort goes into all um, three of the major motion pictures. And, you know, the characters from the 84 movie are so ingrained into our culture now. And it's just a real honor to have an opportunity to draw them and write them and be a part of uh, Ghostbusters in general. It's amazing. It's true. I just let him get going. Uh, when I hear he's about to say something heartfelt, because he does it a lot better than I do. Uh, the words are there, but I, uh, I, I I don't always spit them out good. Usually I have to type. Um, and, and Dan is just very good at verbalizing them. So, you know, I, I, I let him do that so I don't uh, say something stupid. And, uh, my, my other side gig is I do Hallmark cards. That's right. I don't have much sleep. <laughs> you know eric i can really relate to you because i'm the same way i can't really verbalize it that well if i want to say something important i have to type it down type it out and mm-hmm. yeah. talking. well i i'm i i usually uh I, I worry that i'm going to come off uh snarkier than i intend to which sometimes my word choice or tone will will lead me down that path on unwittingly unwantingly but uh there you go <laughs> I think uh, I think you're talking more than I am, just for the simple fact I don't, so I don't swear as much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to take number away. sixteen? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, now, can in, uh, can anyone send you items to autograph for them, or uh, and if so, is there a PO box you'd like uh, to give to fans, or? Uh, you know, I, I I used to have one, but I I closed it a while ago. Um. Mostly because I, I I had one instance where something I sent back got uh, got damaged and I felt super guilty about it. Um, so I kind of I kind of discourage it just because I don't know if it's going to make it back in in the condition it came to me in. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, but yeah. Um, other other than uh, other than that, I mean, <laughs> I, I guess that's a no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I find that just if anybody wants to contact us, we're on social media. And uh, we're quite friendly on mm-hmm. social media. Maybe not so much in person, but uh, <laughs> at least we don't bite on the internet. So, yeah, they can just ask if we want if they want to get in contact, like addresses or whatnot. Mm-hmm. They yeah, hesitate I, to give out a phone number, but yeah, you know. Yeah. We'll see. I will yeah, say you guys have been you, know, very, yeah. you guys have been very accommodating on Twitter. I know. Yeah. I when I share my uh, share our come again uh, Ghostbusters reviews. Daniel almost immediately retweet it, and I think it's fantastic how you guys will uh, really communicate with the fans and everything. That's um, slightly unheard of in the industry nowadays. Most of the time, people, uh, they won't talk to you unless it's at a convention or whatever, or it'll be a one-line or whatever on social media, and that's it. Yeah, yeah it's kind of, it's a... I've, I love to try my best to communicate as much as possible. And I think maybe speaking on behalf of other people that may not, it could also be that they just have lots of people commenting at once. And with Twitter, it can be a bit challenging at times because the feed goes up a bit. So you'll be like, oh, where did that comment go? Or I completely missed it because I had all these other people commenting. So um, not that that's my problem. I'm just saying that could be someone else's. Right. It has a lot of followers. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's our our pleasure to interact and we love hearing about uh, people's experiences with the comic and what they think of it good and bad and uh, you know we just soak it all in and it's really uh, really nice to hear it keeps the fire going right <laughs> yeah. it's true well like I said I hope you guys stay on Ghostbusters for a long long time yeah uh, you guys really capture the characters you guys are a great team yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Maybe the Ghostbusters should cross over with us again. There you go. There yeah. you go. That's true. That's annual. Ma- <laughs> That's maybe, right. maybe have the uh, Ghostbusters on Comic Geddon sometime. <laughs> yeah, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't. You wouldn't get a word in. It's true. Feel, feel free to use our likenesses in like a cameo or whatever. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we there's lots of requests for that. So. <laughs> We do our best. Doing the, the caricatures <laughs> is actually one of the most time-consuming parts of the comics if uh, we're doing things that are paying homage to uh, fans in general. And uh, we love to do it as much as we can, but we can't get everybody. Right. We try our best. So, yeah. uh, when he says we, he definitely means him, because I don't have to draw these pages. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm using the, the royal we, isn't it? Ah, uh, yes, it's true. <laughs> I don't want to be the only person to blame here if they don't get <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you could always blame Luis, too. So. Yeah. No, he's too, way too nice. <laughs> he puts up plus, with enough for me. That's the last thing he needs. <laughs> plus, plus he, he's into MMA, so, you know, we just we Ooh. don't know if he's going to... Uh, yeah, he can kick my ass pretty good. It's, it's, it's true. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, you know, tough little guy. Yeah, lean, mean fight machine. 100%. <laughs> Do you want to take the last? Or uh, yeah, um, now what conventions are you guys going to be doing this year? Like the rest of the year here. Uh, That's well, a good question. You should yeah, we, handle that one, Eric. All right, we we have uh, we have a couple that we're going to be doing together, but one of them isn't announced yet, so I can't mention that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, the announcement will be coming uh, will be coming soon, and then we'll you know blast it all over social media. Uh, we will be. Uh, However, appearing together for signings at San Diego this year in July. That'll be awesome. And um, and uh, I will also be uh, here in, I want to say next month because it feels like June. <laughs> it's still May. Uh, come uh, come early July, uh, it just got put up today, I'll be at uh, Indie Pop Con in Indianapolis. Wow. Uh, so, so I'll be there and uh, then San Diego later in the month and then our mystery uh, convention that we are attending together yes i think the since mystery you... conventions like a a loot crate you don't know what you're gonna get that's true <laughs> that's true you don't know you don't know where we'll be or how long how many days we'll be there or yeah. uh you know if if uh if if we'll be too tired to show up to our table you don't know now, <laughs> now will you guys be uh doing wizard world chicago this year uh i i will not um and uh, you know that's that's in my backyard. So I mean, it would probably <laughs> if I'm not doing it, it'd be it'd be really crazy if Dan was. But no, I'm I'm not uh, doing that this year. I okay. I did see two e two this year earlier, uh, oh, and I uh, I enjoyed the heck out of that show. Billy but uh, yeah, Billy was there. Billy but, was there. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I've been to the Chicago Wizard World twice, um, but uh, I only go to shows that they invite me to. So mm-hmm. if um, you know if they if the fans want to see me at a certain show, they could always contact the. The coordinators or whatnot and just mention it and uh yeah i would love to go again i, I really enjoyed chicago it was nice something mm-hmm. i think would be really nice since you guys did the uh ghostbusters board game maybe having you guys at heroicon right here in decatur illinois or maybe gen con yeah yeah because uh That'd be cool. we do yeah. uh there's heroicon here in town that it's a board gaming uh, that was about a week or two ago yeah yeah convention that they put on yearly so that'd be really cool i'll have to suggest it to them yeah yeah, yeah. I, guess, I guess if you uh, hit up cryptozoic they might be interested in doing something like yeah, that maybe for the, the next board game release the gb2 now do you know about when that's supposed to come out i'm sorry do you know when that second game's supposed to come out and if it's a Full size game like the yeah, first one, or was an expansion? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty soon. It's uh, it's 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 done. It's finished. It's right now. It's just uh, it's it's crossing the ocean. It's in it's in a ship. I mean, that was a couple of weeks ago. So it's probably just got to clear customs. Okay. Yeah, and so, I think they they're gonna mail it out to mm-hmm. everybody at the same time because last time I think they did it differently, and this time they're gonna do it all at once so that nobody's waiting for their board game. Okay. Yeah. So uh, is... Other than the, there's, there's some stuff that we have to sign and we're going to be signing that at uh, San Diego. So, I mean, that might okay. hold up. Are we? Okay. Get, we are. Cause we, we, okay. we had stuff that we were supposed to sign and, and this is going to be, uh, I think That's it's going to be easier, easier than them shipping it to us and us having to ship it back. <laughs> yes. That's, that's definitely a trip to the post office saved. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's true. 
it's a whole block for me, so <laughs> it's way too much time. Yeah. I, I've I've got about ten miles. You've got a whole block. That's why. I, that's why I said that because I knew how far away you were. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, well, I think um, that's gonna about wrap things up. Unless you had anything to add, John. Um, just I mean, stay stay true to what you guys are doing. You guys are doing great. Love the books. Um. I'm looking forward to this next board game, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking so. forward to playing the game altogether. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for having us on. It was great chatting with you and uh, mm -hmm. really enjoyed the questions. And yeah, I had some great laughs. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we really appreciate you guys being our first industry interview, which was very nice of you guys. Uh, like I said, we've only been on YouTube for a little over a year now. Almost two years now. No, it's all, it's been a little over a year. We started uh, January of last year, so. Oh wow. Yeah, so we really appreciate you accommodating us and answering our questions, and like John said, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, you guys sync well as a team. Uh, you do great job on Ghostbusters. We have I haven't read the Back to the Future comics yet or I've, the Ninja I've, Turtles. I've or read anything. a couple of them. They're really good. So. Um. Yeah. They're but yeah, just, a lot of fun to work on those ones. <laughs> mm -hmm. But as lifelong fans, you guys are doing an amazing job Great with the job, Ghostbusters. Yes. Keep it up. Loving everything. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, we will. Thank you. Yes. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and uh, call it now. Or my camera's almost out of uh, filming time. So yeah. uh, again, <laughs> thank you, and uh, we'll see you guys on Twitter and in the funny pages. Yeah, sounds right. great. Just uh, as soon as you have the episode up, let us know, and or I'll I'll probably see it and I can retweet it and we'll share it on uh, social media. Right. We'll do. So, that'd be great. Sounds yeah. good. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All right. Take care, guys. Yep. You too.